Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Encounter Today. Listen, are you hungry for more of God? Do you want to see more of the tangible encounters with God that you've longed for, dreamed for? Listen, today, in the name of Jesus, you're going to discover how to do that, how you can accomplish the will of God by getting in the realm of God and have a tremendous, I'm so excited, have a tremendous guest with us. But before I introduce her, I want you to introduce yourself right there in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from and what are you believing God for? What kind of God encounter do you want to see in your life or in your family's life? Because you're going to get it in the name of Jesus. Because we have a guest with us who's going to speak faith into your heart, a prophetic word into your life. She is a prophetic revivalist. She's the founder of Dream Mentors International. She's the host of Glory Road and numerous other shows as well. You've seen her all over the place, and she now has a great book called Heavenly Portals. Would you welcome in the comments Candace Smithyman? Candace, it's so good to have you with us. Hello, Alan. I'm so excited to be here with you today. It was so wonderful doing ministry with you this past month when we were at Pastor Troy Brewers, yes. and it's just, it's great. And I was so honored to be on the show with you today and be able to share the Word of God with the people. You know, it was interesting. Uh, I got to give me a word for Pastor Troy's church, and I was very hesitant about giving it. And then you got up in front of me and you paved the way. You were like a John the Baptist that gave me permission to be me and to obey what the Lord was telling me to do. And I think he's going to do the same for people who are listening and who are watching this because you have a way of giving people permission to engage in the supernatural, to be who God has called them to be. How long have you been in ministry now doing what you're doing for the kingdom? Uh, the Lord called me in 1999. That's when I answered mm -hmm. the call to ministry. And then I just started moving fast and furious since then. Um, started out as an evangelist. And then the Lord uh, really uh, spoke to me about pastoring a church. My husband wanted to pastor, actually. And in my first book, Releasing Heaven, Creating Supernatural Environments Through Heavenly Encounters, I share my testimony about how the Lord actually caught me up to heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pastor Allen, it wasn't even fair. You know, he caught me up to heaven. <laughs> and then he asked me to feed his sheep. Well, it's not not like mm. I'm going to say no to him, right? I mean, so when I came back, that's what he said, when you feed my sheep three times. And I knew that he had called uh, me to pastor a church with my husband because I was uh, a bit resistant. You know, I love to travel the world and um, I love to minister the gospel in all kinds of different places. And and I just didn't, didn't think I could do it. I was just like, Lord, you know, my personality, I'm just not sure I can do it, but God called me to pastor. And so my husband, I did that for 16 years. And now I'm back to, um, you know, apostolic and prophetic ministry uh, through all of my various television programs and um, just traveling, uh, traveling the world, you know, evangelizing and seeing signs, miracles and wonders. And so I've been in ministry, you know, what, over 20 years. And wow. um, it's been an awesome experience, truly. Well, it's amazing to see the favor of God on your life and how many doors the Lord has opened up for you to get this message out. That's the reason for it. And as we get to this book and as we get to the message of this book, what kind of birthed it for you? Why, why this book? Why now? You know, um, this book, uh, actually each one of my books is cultivated after writing another one. I mean, this is like continual revelation that the Lord just kind of pulls down from heaven. And, and as I was writing my angels of fire book, God just began to even pour forth all of this um, uh, just incredible revelation about the kingdom of heaven and really how to walk in the power of the kingdom of heaven, but from an understanding of eternity, how mm -hmm. eternity impacts our past, present, and our future. And that if we can change our mindset and cultivate an eternal mindset instead of a, an earth mindset, right? We can begin to live in the kingdom of heaven in the earth. And you know, um, Pastor Alan, as you know, and we, you and I have had many conversations about um, Luke chapter five, um, but yes. you know, in Luke chapter four, Jesus said, uh, you know, he said, hey guys, this is my purpose. I came to preach the kingdom hmm. and I am a sent one. 
And so this book is a cul the culmination of teaching us how to live in the realm of the kingdom of life. It's a very, very prosperous realm. It is an eternal realm. And so as God began to really start pouring down on me, he said, listen, Candace, everywhere your foot treads, you will take that land. Because I was seeking him for, for greater glory, more signs, miracles, and wonders. And he said, listen, my son, when he walked the earth, he knew these keys. He knew and understood that he stayed seated with me while his foot tread on the earth. And everywhere his foot tread, eternity was treading. In other words, the effects of the fall of man were not going anywhere Jesus' feet were walking. And so Jesus is like, you can teach the people this because I did come, I did die, shed my blood, bury, resurrect, and ascend. And this is where the church is seated. Now teach them to walk in eternal realms in the earth. And I began to start to apply these keys and principles myself Pastor Allen and I saw amazing glory come into the house. Now, when I go and I travel, the glory of the Lord comes forth and the Lord does amazing things, you know, not just through the word, through through speaking and ministering the word, people are, are healed and they're delivered. But, but more than anything, it's because the kingdom, the dominion of life has been deposited in the earth realm everywhere we go, myself, you as glory carriers, everywhere we go, everywhere a foot treads, that glory glory realm comes. And it's learning to walk in that confidence, Pastor Allen, because people don't, um, they don't have that confidence. You know, they'll look at these things, but they'll think it's not for them. Hey, this was for mm. Jesus, right? And even though I have the power of the Holy Spirit, and I know he says greater works will I do, still I'm hesitant. Like, don't you know what I did yesterday? We, we're always looking at ourselves, but we're not looking at God and what he did. And so this book helps us learn to be a heavenly portal. So everywhere our foot tracks, we really will take the land. There's something to walking in a righteousness consciousness and being aware of what Christ has done in you and through you. And I think everybody can relate to being in a service where the glory of God is and the clarity of purpose that comes and the knowledge of what God wants you to do and his plan for you and the strength to do it. It's all there. And then Monday rolls around and you're not sure if it was God, and you don't know if you can do it, and, and now you you don't know if you can hear what God's saying, and now you're all confused. Is, is that kind of the difference? We've got, to, we've got to teach people to walk, not just visit places of glory, but to walk in the glory for themselves. That's exactly right. And they have to be taught. You know, Jesus was trying to teach the disciples that, but there was so much that they were hadn't even grasped about the fact him even being Messiah and yeah. really what that meant, and that he was going to have to go to the cross, you know. So he's exhibiting all of this, but greater things will we do. Greater things have we seen that Jesus himself has showed us. And so now it's our obligation, and especially in the earth today, especially the way our culture is today, the culture is hungry for the carriers of the glory of the Lord, ones that are opening up the portals of heaven so that they can begin to tap into the essence of who God is. He is mm. pleased with the prosperity of his servant. Yes. This is the God that we serve. He's got great joy when he sees us operating in who he is in the earth realms today. And so I really have this burden to just motivate the body of Christ and bring them into a place of word knowledge. You know, mm. Pastor Allen, I'm a word girl. If yes. it doesn't say it in the word, this is not something we should be ministering, Thank right? You. It is the word of God that changes and transforms people. And so, so to get them in that word and in my book, I have, it's just chock full of word to help transform the soul. So the soul can grab a hold of that uh, immense glory and joy and peace that the Lord is saying is ours. It's ours. It is for us. And it is for us today. And more so than ever before, because because he is coming back and he wants to have the earth ready for his return. And so it's our obligation to take the land for mm. him. And so this is about how to be a royal uh, citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And, and I live this every day of my life. So it's not like I was just, you know, yapping here and, and writing <laughs> out good scriptures, but there's an impartation yes. on the book. I mean, I live this every day. And when I, when the Lord asks me to travel to places, I live it and I exemplify the royalty of the kingdom of heaven as Paul was an example 
to the disciples, the Lord has called me to be an example of what is it like to live in this kingdom realm. And um, so it's sacred and it's holy and it's righteous. And uh, it's something that he wants all of his people to carry. But but we need models. We need people yes. that can do that. Well, your life certainly is a model. That's why we're going to put in the description of this video links to your social media because you're constantly ministering on there and pouring into people's lives so people can connect with you and receive from you. And in a moment, I want to ask about some practical things that we can do from the book to be carriers of the glory. But first, talk to us about the difference between operating in the soulish and the spirit realm and how confusing the two can get us into trouble. Yes, you know, this is really something that's discerned, Pastor Allen, as, mm -hmm. as I know that you know, you know, um, as ministers of the gospel, you know, we might think we're operating the spirit realms, but, you know, there's truly a difference between the spirit and the soulish realms. And so the more that I get in these uh, deeper places with God, the more he's taking me to the realms of where he is and not the soulish realms. The soulish realms are where we're trying to get things. We're trying to get our needs met, provision, protection, acceptance, resources, recognition, relationships, money, security. It's where our eyes and our soul are bound to what happened in the fall of man. When Adam and Eve um, committed, uh, you know, th that fraud that they committed in the garden where they went for uh, the forbidden fruit. They took us into a realm of darkness, a soulish realm. The cares and we, of this world. as the people of God, have been operating from that soulish realm from the beginning of time. Hmm. But what Jesus did is through our death, burial, and resurrection in him, and he broke the power of sin, death, and the grave, he has now elevated us with him in the ascension, where the spiritual is where he is calling us to live and breathe without the antagonism of the soulish realm realms. Wow. He is calling us to freely live in the dominion of life. That realm that we have been held captive to is the dominion of death, but it's been broken. That's what the resurrection is all about. But the ascension is understanding the fact that there is a living point. There is a life point and a breathing point where now we are in the dominion of life and all choices and decisions need to be made there. So the spirit realms are the dominion of life. The earth realms still have the dominion of death, but there's a clash with when those spirit realms touch the earth realms, that dominion of life must manifest because the bonds of the enemy have been broken. The captivity is uh, is done. It's finished. We are now in a, a realm of the eternal. We just have to act like it. We have to look at things and say they're fully redeemed, not partially redeemed, hmm. right? They're fully redeemed. And because of that redemption, we're here to take back the land and we're here to live that way. So it's understanding that we are called to be these world changers from a spirit realm first, from an ascended place. And I teach all about the ascension in there. How, how is the ascension so important? And that the resurrection is important. You can't call yourself a Christian without it. But that purpose was to break the bonds of sin, death, and the grave. The purpose of the ascension is to reposition the church of Jesus Christ so that now we act and respond from that place. And so when you understand these differences, and, and, and a human can, can grab a hold of that through spiritually, God opens up our spiritual uh, smell, taste, touch, eyes, hearing, when he, he ignites that and through impartation, we can then begin to start to live it out. We then begin to start having those soulish realms uh, really uh, be every day defeated by the spirit realms. Wow. It brings kind of new light to calling those things that be not as though they were as we operate in this ascended realm. And you have a whole chapter in that on the book on living the, uh, the ascended life. But now practically, how do we break free now? The average person listening right now, they're watching this and they say, yes, I want to walk in it. I want to walk in the glory. How do I do that? Practically speaking, you know, steps one, two, and so on. Yes. Really, really good question. Well, first you have to understand that you're properly positioned in the ascension realms. Already. If, if you don't get that, you need to just go back to scripture. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. spend some time understanding what the gospel is all about. The gospel is the fact that Jesus died 
shed his blood, buried, and resurrected to overcome sin, death, and the grave. That was the purpose of it, right? And to reposition us, to position us in relationship now with the Father. So he gave his life so we could have relationship with the Father. But when he told Mary in John, he said, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet gone to my Father and your Father. I have not yet gone to my God and your God. What Jesus is saying at that point is sin, death, and the grave has been overcome, but there's more to the story. Now I want you to be lifted into relationship with my Father. Okay, I took care of all that so you could have relationship with my father, but now relationship with my father. And he is my father and your father. He's my God and he's your God. And when you rest in knowing him, you will be who I am in the earth today. You will respond. In other words, Jesus says, I bought it all back for you. I've redeemed it all, but now I'm raising you up with me. So now we together with the father can now begin to live in the earth as though what happened with Adam and Eve becomes irrelevant. Now we're being called to live it out as though all things can be turned around. I know we look out the window of our house every day or we just turn on the TV, stay in your house, turn on the TV, and you're sure that nothing's been redeemed. But that is all a lie from the enemy. It has all been redeemed. And mm. that redemption brings joy and peace, the fruit of the Spirit, the prosperity of God, which is shalom. Prosperity means shalom. Mm. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Yes. I know we always want to apply it to finances, but finances are just an overflow of shalom. Yes. And so... So when we talk about being practical, you got to first know where your position, Pastor Allen. And you know what? I believe that the people of God don't know where they're positioned. So no. they can't open up a portal from heaven to even be able to walk in the earth as though everything has been accomplished. Everywhere that we go, it's already been accomplished. See, we don't have to wait for it to be accomplished. Mm. It, Jesus accomplished it. Now, our job is to say, this has already been accomplished. Move over, devil, because you're just a figment of our imagination in this regard. You're just causing us to live like we're in the matrix. But we have got to snap out of this and begin to be who God has called us to be in not only the resurrection, but the ascension. I believe it was Paul who said he wanted the communication of your faith to become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus. I want everybody right now to write in the comments, it's already done. It's already done. It's already accomplished. You're not trying to get God to do something. He has already done the work. It's already accomplished in your life. And I believe as she's been sharing this, something's been rising up on the inside of you to take back your family, to take back your finances, to take possession of that which God has promised you. This is the time to do it. And you're going to do it through those steps. Number one, acknowledging everything Jesus Christ has done. But now, Candace, if you could talk to us about kingdom structure, which is an entire chapter in your book so that believers can begin to understand what they're walking in and how they're supposed to walk in it. Yes, that whole chapter of kingdom structure is really uh, written around Ezekiel and his experience in the Valley of Dry Bones and the, how the Lord came to him and spoke to him. Look around yourself, Ezekiel, and see what is it that you see, Ezekiel? What is it that you see? And he says, well, listen, I see all these dry bones, you know, I mean, surely, Lord, what is it that you see? You know, and so it's this revelation of us having to understand what is it that God sees? Because what we're going to see is death, destruction. We're going to see a mess of stuff going on. And Pastor Allen, this is what the body of Christ is seeing all day long. But we're not actually activating what's ours to make the difference. We're spending a lot of time complaining and agreeing mm -hmm. with what the earth already says, right? So the Lord had to snap Ezekiel out of it. And as he did, he then began to call forth the four winds. He began to call forth the Ruach, the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, and declare and decree what God saw, which is that these bones could rise and become a vast army for the Lord. And so we need to know and understand that our eyes are going to see through the soulish realms first. That is just an effect of the fall of man. We, we see earthly, we act earthly, but he's calling us to be above and beyond that. So even if we don't see it, the new kingdom structure is for us. To, and it's, it's, this has been in the word all along. It's not like this is a new revelation, right? Mm -hmm. But kingdom structure is what's necessary for the kingdom of God to be built off of. And it's built off of those who see it different 
who see it as God sees it, who sees it based on what Jesus already did. I mean, Alan, it's a fact. He already resurrected. That's a fact. It's yeah. an historical fact, just as much as it is a spiritual fact. Okay. And it's an historical fact that he went up and he was ascended. These are historical facts. And so the, from these facts that happened in the soulish realm, we have a reconciliation now of the spirit overcoming the soulish and we as the people of god called to prophesy declare and decree what god sees all the time even when we don't see it we've got to step into this new kingdom structure so that we can begin to open up these heavenly portals and you know um pastor allen i'm seeing in the spirit realms all the time these heavenly portals that are opening all different places like all over the earth all different moments all different appointed times times and and yes these these kinds of portals are amazing to get ourselves in you and i were in one in open door church yes. when we were there ministering yes. okay so so there's environmental portals but that doesn't change the fact that we are a walking heavenly portal when we refuse to see what the earth sees and we begin to see what god sees and we begin to declare it and decree it and call forth the power of god upon it then we're going to start to see these differences uh take place instead of shying back when you only see from an earth earth realm perspective just do what ezekiel said and say surely god that's not what i see but you see something different so tell me what is it that you see hmm. i mean that's about as simple and as practical as we can get here it's like god show me what you see and then give me the words to begin to speak to this situation because it looks so bad you know alan what i've noticed over the years of walking with the lord i'm sure you have too is i have just like you have become like him right we become like him and so when we then begin to see things that are death we can begin to speak out life upon those things because we carry the zoe life of god we carry his vitality we carry that everlasting on the inside of us and so we don't accept death the same way that the world accepts death we don't accept um you know all of the evil things that are taking place in the earth we don't accept that because we don't have to accept that because that's not what god sees god sees that his son came and destroyed that and now he's raised the church to a higher level position to now take authority and begin to step into these earth realms and speak to them that they might change, but speak from the core of that vitality of life, that that eternal core of everlasting life. That's what we're called to speak forth. That's what Ezekiel was called to speak forth. That is the essence of the kingdom structure. It is it has been said from the beginning, but here's the deal. The the time and the seasons, creation is calling out for the for the sons and daughters of God to take their position. Yeah. And so if we're going to take our position, we need to go back to what kingdom structure is. And kingdom structure is that it's life everlasting all the time. It's not how you feel today. It's life mm. everlasting all the time. It's not what you saw on TV. It's life everlasting all the time. I know they want to preach death. I know they want to minister all this death. But the fact of the matter is, he says it's been accomplished and we got to walk it out. Come on, Encounter Today family. As you're, as you're watching this, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Maybe just lift your hands right there. She's been pouring into you prophetically. And I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, show me what you see. When you look at my marriage, what do you see? When you look at my children, what do you see? When you look at my finances, when you look at my body and the doctor's report, show me what you see so I can get a hold of your structure for this situation. And Candace, in a moment, you have you have such a prophetic insight, and I know the Lord's been showing you some things about where we are right now as a church. But I want to say something to everybody. You need to get a hold of this book. It's got a lot of meat in there, Heavenly Portals. We're going to put the link in the description of this video. And we want to encourage you to sow into this anointing. We want to sow into it. We want to be a blessing to her for taking her time to be with us. Go to EncounterToday.com. Take advantage of the special offer there. When you sow and help us be a blessing to this ministry, I can tell you what, we're going to send you materials that are going to build your faith, starve your doubts to death, and set you on fire for the kingdom. Help us be a blessing to this great anointing that's sowing into us tonight by going to EncounterToday.com and giving in obedience to the Holy Spirit and get a hold of this book, Heavenly Portals. Now, Sister Candace, we're, we're in a very, a very precarious situation nationally, internationally. What is the Spirit of God saying to you about where we are as a church, what the church needs to know, and what we need to do moving forward? 
Yes, you know, I appreciate that question. You know, I, I really um, I really have this heavy burden from the Lord that church has got to raise up. Yes. We have got to take our position. And as, as I said, you know, um, everywhere the spirit realms are crying out for the sons and daughters of God to take our position. Uh, we need to stop um, complaining and feeling as though we are in the... Um, the the background we're the losers in this thing hmm. um you know we don't have anything to sow or give because those are lies of the enemy that's exactly where he wants us to be remember when he came into the garden see adam and eve were told in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that they were to have dominion subdue replenish increase and multiply yes. that was spoken before genesis chapter 3 yet when the serpent came in they didn't say talk to the hand buddy we dominate over you right now and get yourself out of this garden. Instead, they listened to what it was that he had to say, which told them a lie about something that they were not. He said, you will be like God if you eat from this tree. But guess what, Alan? They were made in the image of God. Yes. They were already like God, right? And so we have this thing going on today where we're allowing that serpent to keep talking to us and keep telling us the royal citizens of the kingdom of heaven are not the royal citizens that's what he's mm. saying he's saying look around you royal citizens look all of the depraved ones are raising up but listen that's a lie until we band together until we say no 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 we are the ones that are called we are the children of the inheritance we have been given everything we need by god and he sent it to us when he sent his son we've just got to raise up and stop allowing the serpent to dominate we have to turn around and say no serpent you you shut up we're here as the the members of the kingdom as ambassadors of the king this is his land and this is how we say it goes and so this is what he says you know pastor allen every time um a country was conquered a king or a queen sent over an ambassador the minute that they got there everything in that kingdom had to change to what the king and the queen wanted mm. after that land was conquered but i don't see the people of god saying wait a minute jesus has conquered already See, we're still looking at our circumstances and saying, oh my gosh, but do you see this happening? Listen, those are only reasons for us to rise up even more and say, but that's a lie from the enemy. Don't listen to that. Don't let that serpent get in your ear. We have been called to increase or multiply, replenish, subdue, and dominate. But we don't dominate because we've been so beat down by all the lies that we've accepted as truth. See, we, we've got to change things and say, I don't don't accept that that's not truth yes. that's not truth i don't accept that this is what the truth of the word is and begin to position ourselves for rulership now listen pastor allen i believe this more than anything jesus is coming back yes. all right he's coming back but he's coming back for a land that's fit for a king so when we talk about him where is he and why is he here yet and they've been saying he's coming back for two thousand years because it's in the word right it's because he gave us the authority to make the land right for him to come visit. Tell me this. If the ambassador doesn't do his job right, is the king or the queen going to want to step on the land? Or are they going to feel like the moment they get out of their black limousine, there's going to be an ambush that takes place because the land is unsettled and it's not in a place of rest, hmm. right? Now, our king is not afraid of an ambush. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about earthly kings, right? Earthly kings are not going to step foot in a place that they even conquered if they're fearful that they might lose their life because the ambassador didn't do what he was supposed to be doing well jesus not fearful of losing his life but what he is saying is ambassadors i called you to get up stand up raise up and tell that devil in genesis chapter one i called you to do it but my son came to make it right so that you could now do it will you please do it so that when my son comes there could be a party instead of an ambush and, 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 and instead of positioning um a, you all of you positioning yourselves for a takeover position yourself for the fact that you took it over and so therefore it's now right ground for my son to walk on well the kingdom of heaven suffers violence the and the violent take it by force john sure. the baptist came to prepare the way of the lord and people are watching right now and they're realizing i need to take my position i need to prepare you were saying when you were talking about the serpent i heard this in my spirit 
The Bible says that everywhere the sole of your foot shall tread, he'll give it to you. A serpent doesn't have feet. He has no authority to take possession of anything that you have in your life. And it's time for us to cast him out. Would you pray over the audience right now? Would you pray that that possessing anointing will come on them and that they'll walk in this thing and walk underneath these heavenly portals? You bet I will. You bet I will. And I love that analogy. The serpent, he slithers with no feet. No feet. We're the ones that have the feet. Yes. And remember, it was Jesus' heel that was bruised. But he cut off the head, yes. right? And we right? tread okay. on serpents. So, yes. yes. So our job is to tread on the serpent. You know, it's like rock, paper, scissors. Guess who wins? We do. <laughs> Every time with the rock, with the paper, with the scissors. Well, you cannot refute it. We win. So, Father, we just thank you. In thank the mighty you, name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you, Father, I just impart to the people right now that are watching, just stir, stir. Let your spirit rise right now in yes. the mighty name of Jesus. I see you with the royal crown upon your head. I see you with the purple cape. I see you with a sword in your hand. Hand. God is ready for the sons of God to rise up. I see you rising up right now. You're called to dominate, subdue, replenish, bring increase and multiply right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is pleased in your prosperity and he's provided everything you need to be prosperous in the earth today. The work has been done. All things have been redeemed. Step into it. Everywhere your foot treads, you will take the land. He spoke that to Joshua. So very, very important. We shall be courageous. We shall stand. The Lord is calling us to do this. Father, I thank you as you're calling those to just rise up right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that they're going to reach out to Pastor Allen right now, Father. Yes. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that they're going to step into these places where they come into agreement with him, Lord. They come into agreement with me, Father, that they have been changed, healed, saved, and redeemed, Father, and that you have properly positioned them. Our position is here with you. Every enemy is under our feet. The enemy is a footstool to you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that we take our swords and we bear down on the head of the enemy, Father, and the head shall be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. You've already done this, Father. We're just simply walking it out right now as ascended members of the church of Jesus Christ, seated with you in these heavenly places. I thank you, Father, that a heavenly portal is opening right now over all of those that are watching right now. Let that heavenly portal just come upon you. The Lord is positioning hmm. you. That crown on your head, that sword, your Bible in your hand, you are ready to go. You're facing some opposition but the lord says you are victorious not you will be victorious you are victorious already just walk into it right now with the confidence i impart confidence right now to the yes. body of christ in the mighty name of jesus what he has already done it is finished and father we just thank you so much for your resurrection and your ascension you made it possible for god to be our father and your father and we praise you and we thank you lord that he is our father and all all that he has promised us has already come to pass and will continue to do so. Lord, I praise you and I thank you right now. Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. Pastor Allen, yes. I just feel right now somebody's just really receiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, if you're feeling the power of God come upon you, I want wow. you to open your mouth right now because I just feel that yes. the baptism of the Holy Spirit come is on. coming upon you right now. You're going to begin to speak in other tongues. You feeling any heaviness in oh, your chest God. and in your belly? Come on, that's the power of God yes. coming upon you right now. Oh, just come forth right now just come forth listen Woo! god's cleaning you out right now somebody's receiving an activation the power hmm. of the holy ghost but an activation of gifts right now to walk out in the mighty name of jesus Woo! i feel that hallelujah. right here hallelujah. hallelujah lord i thank you fire fire revival fire. coming to the people of god hallelujah. right now Thank you, Jesus, for fire revival. Woo, hallelujah, glory. Woo, I come on, that right come now. on, come on, come on. Lift your hands right there where you are. <laughs> receive, receive fire from heaven. Portals are being opened all over the place, Sister Candace, all over the place. For your family, an anointing is coming on your hands right now as you lift them for your family. Yes. A transferable, yoke-destroying, burden-removing anointing that when you lay your hands on them, they will be set free to fire fire somebody write in the comments it is done it is done it is done it is done hallelujah hallelujah this is the kind of anointing sister candace brings with her hallelujah Woo. wow Woo. praise the lord somebody just rose from the grave i'm yeah. sure of it there was a resurrection 
somewhere. My God. See, folks, that's the power that you carry. That you carry. Don't just look at Pastor Allen and I and just assume that we're carriers of this. All the citizens of the kingdom of heaven have this power. All of us do. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, his power, the fullness of his power comes on the inside of you. A manifestation of speaking in other tongues. A fullness comes forth. That fullness means everything is complete, nothing missing, nothing broken. Yeah. So if nothing missing, nothing broken is walking the earth, what is it doing? It's causing everything that's broken and missing to come into alignment. That's kingdom structure. If it's broken, if it's missing, we call it into alignment yes. right now with the word of God, with the spirit of God. We sow to the spirit and we will reap from the spirit. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap correction, corruption, but we sow to the spirit and in a due season, in the season, we will see the harvest. Ooh, glory. Ooh. Hallelujah. And it's Hallelujah. harvest time. It's harvest time. Blessed be the name of God forever. And this is what you're going to get, ladies and gentlemen, when you get a hold of this book, Heavenly Portals. You're going to learn how to step into that anointing. Sister Candace, I can't, I can't thank you enough for coming on the program. In fact, if you'll take a few minutes, we're going to go over to the podcast. There's one portal that I think is the most controversial and debated that I'm going to talk with you about over on Encounter Underground. And if people want to connect with your social media, we've got the links in the description. I hear I might be on one of your programs coming up. You are, sir. And we <laughs> talked about how the spirit of mammon is defeated. Oh. Now, come on. If that is just right there, folks, that title ought to get you to yeah. want to take a look at that video and to share it. The spirit of mammon and Pastor Allen shares how it's tied to the spirit of Leviathan. Now, yeah. I know that you feel and understand that you've been touched by Leviathan before, but you didn't know it had a root in mammon. Mm. So come on. You're going to learn all about that. So I want you to go to uh, my website, Candy. CandaceSmithman.com, but go to my YouTube at Candace Smithman. Go to my face page, Candace Smithman. Go to my Instagram, Candace Smithman. It's all really, really easy right there. <laughs> and you'll have a chance to connect with Pastor Allen's teaching on how to defeat the spirit of mammon. And it's a real prosperity teaching because yeah. it, it combats uh, the understanding of prosperity from an earthly standpoint and brings you into an understanding of prosperity from a spiritual standpoint, which is really where our mind need to be Ooh, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. and there's the so Spirit. much good content on your show on your program so much that people can receive from so again ladies and gentlemen the links are in the description we're going to have sister kansas over with us on encounter underground for our podcast so be sure to check that out and share this message right now hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already what's the matter with you hit that thumbs up button hit the share button make sure you put your prayer requests in the comments so we can stand in faith with you and we'll see you next time god bless